Hey, what's up everyone? This is Greg. Welcome back to our beginning core data video tutorial series. In this video, we'll look at predicates and sorting. Rather than just fetch all data in some seemingly random order, we'll learn how to use predicates to filter that data and sort descriptors to order the data in some sensible way. Here's what the app will look like by the end of this video. You'll have a filter option to limit what's shown in the list of devices. A predicate is some kind of statement that can be true or false depending on the input. Predicates are used throughout COCO, not just in core data, but in this video, we'll focus on how to use NS predicate objects to filter and search through our object graph with fetch requests. For example, a predicate can be as simple as one built from the string name equals Christine, or you can build in multiple conditions, such as citizenship equals Bulgaria and countries visited is greater than 10. There is an entire grammar of building predicates, and you'll find a link to the predicate reference documentation in the notes below. A sort descriptor describes how you want your output data to be ordered. NS sort descriptor objects wrap your sorting logic into a convenient object. At its simplest, you can simply specify which field to sort on and whether to do the sorts in ascending or descending order. If you want to get fancier with your own custom sorting logic, you can also create a sort descriptor that takes a selector, so you can call your own method to do the comparison, or you can pass in a block that returns an NS comparison result with your own logic right in line. You've already been using NSFetchRequest to fetch all records of a particular entity. NSFetchRequest instances have two optional properties on them, predicate and sort descriptors. All you need to do is set these properties with an NSPredicate instance and an array of sort descriptors. You pass in an array here because you can sort by field A and then secondarily by field B and so on. Once you have those properties set, just execute the fetch request as usual, and you'll see the results in the returned array of managed objects. Here's the code for the devices table view controller that lists all of the devices, and we're going to add a filter feature here. Right now, you can see in the view did load, we're setting up the right bar button item here to have the add button, which is going to add another device. Let's add another item here so that we can also have a filter button. Instead of using right bar button item, I'm going to use right bar button items with an S and set it to an array. I'm still leaving the original add button, which will be on the right, and then to the left of it, we're going to have this new filter button. It's going to call the selector select filter. Let's go ahead and implement that next. I'm setting up a UI alert controller here with the action sheet style, and it's going to have the title filter options. And I'm going to need to add a few actions. We're going to have a show all to reset the filter. We'll show iPhones only, Apple Watches only, and then we'll have a cancel button just to exit the action sheet. Here's my cancel button. I have it set up in the cancel style and in the handler for this closure expression, I'm just going to leave it blank because we don't need to do anything when the user hits cancel. Here's our show all button in the default style. I'm actually just going to copy and paste this two more times so that we can use it for both the show iPhones and show watches selections as well. Okay, there are our action items, but now it's unclear about where we're going to do the filtering. Let me just scroll up to the reload data method here. Right now, we're just creating a fetch request and running it. 
And before we run it, we're actually going to need to add a predicate to it. What I'm going to do here is change the method signature. And it's going to take a optional string called device type filter. If I pass in a string, then I'm going to set up a predicate to filter the device type, which you, if you'll recall is also a string. And I've given it a optional argument of nil. So that means that just calling reload data with no parameters will work as usual for the rest of the implementation here that may do that. But now there's an optional parameter that we can pass in as this string. Let's go ahead and use that to set up a predicate. I've got some if let binding going on here just to make sure that that parameter was passed in with an actual string. And then I'm setting up a predicate. There's this predicate with format initializer. And you can see I'm using some string interpolation to put in the filter. And then all I need to do is set the predicate property on the fetch request. And then when I run it later on down here, it should be filtered with only that device type. If you're familiar with SQL programming and you know about SQL injection, and that means that who knows what's going to be passed in here. This device type filter could be a closing quotation mark and some other things to mess up the search. It's not going to actually update any data, so there's no risk of deleting data or anything like that. But again, if you're familiar with SQL injection attacks, this is something similar where you might need to be careful about what you have in there. What you should do instead is to use a format string. So instead, what I'm going to do is say device type is equal to this percent at sign, and I'm going to pass in the variable at the end, like so. So that's a safer way to do things. If you're familiar with Objective-C string with format, this might look familiar. And then this is just a standard format string kind of thing in C, Python. You see this in a lot of other languages. We've got that set up. Let's go back down to our action sheet and make sure we're calling through. Now the show all can just call reload data with no parameters as usual. And then for the other two, we're going to pass in that optional parameter as well. OK, that looks good. Let me just go back to the reload data. And I do have this line up here in view will appear, which also makes sure, aside from reloading the data, we're also refreshing the table view. I'm just going to cut and paste that. and make sure we're calling table view reload data at the end of our method reload data. Let's go ahead and build and run and have a look. Here's the app running. We've got the add button and a filter button. I'm going to go ahead and tap that. And you'll see if I just hit cancel, it dismisses as usual. Let's go ahead and filter for only phones. And it blanks out. We have no results coming back. Let me test the show all. That one is OK. You'll see the watch also doesn't show anything. Now, if you look at the show all, you'll see that iPhone has a capital P and watch has a capital W. Let me go back to the code. And you'll see that we're passing in all lowercase iPhone and all lowercase watch. We could update this, but just in case, let's just make this a case insensitive search on the predicate. We're just using the plain old equals equals, and I'll change that to be case insensitive, which looks like this. It's an equal sign, and then inside the square brackets, you can provide some options, C meaning case insensitive. Let me go ahead and build and run. And now you'll see when I do the filter, we get only phones and only watches. As I mentioned in the slides, there is a whole language of predicates here with many kinds of options. And you'll find more details in the predicate documentation. And also in the challenge, you'll look at some more advanced predicates and also add some sorting to the app. You might also be thinking it's a little bit strange that the device type is a string like this because we could mistype iPhone, we could mistype watch. What if there are other kind of devices in play later on? And if you're thinking that, that's good. And that's something that we'll address a little bit later in the intermediate series. So stay tuned.
That's it for this video tutorial, and as always, we like to leave you with a challenge. You've seen some simple filtering and sorting in the demo, and your challenge is to try adding some more sorting and advanced predicates to the app. You'll find all the details in the challenge document, along with a complete walkthrough in case you need some help along the way. I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.